Hey YouTube, how's it going? It's Mark again, and welcome back to the Swamp and Stomp YouTube channel. So uh, this week we're going to do something a little bit different than we've done before. Uh, we've been hunting this new area. We've gotten two quotas. We hunted it for archery, and during that hunt, that was sort of the first time that we got to see the place, and I was fortunate enough to harvest a doe. And if you haven't seen that video yet, uh, make sure that you click the link in the description. And we came back this week during the muzzleloader hunt, and this time we had a, a little bit better of an idea of what we were dealing with. So in this video, it's kind of like a little video podcast style thing where we're sitting around eating dinner and we're talking about where we're going to sit, why we're going to sit there, what we've been looking for in scouting, and uh, you know just our general approach to this hunt. So this might be helpful for you guys when you're scouting a new area. Uh, you might get some interesting tips and pointers uh, about how to uh, go about hunting in a new area. And don't forget guys, we just came out with our brand new Swamp and Stomp shirts. And for just the next two days, you can get yourself one of these for $30. After that, the price is gonna go up to the regular price. As you can see, we've got our big logo on the back. We've got uh, logos down the sleeve and on the chest. But more importantly, these shirts are really functional. We made them using our brand new high pine camo. And as you can see, these are basically pictures taken from the ground up at pine trees. So you have the sky in the background. So when you're hunting out of a tree stand like we do most of the time, when that deer's walking under your stand and it looks up at you, you're actually going to blend in really well with the background, unlike a lot of those other camos like real tree and mossy oak. Now you might be thinking, why do I need to buy another camo shirt? The ones I've got seem to work okay. And that's a fair point. But keep in mind that we made these shirts specifically with hunting in Florida in mind. You put that hood up in the morning when you're waiting for the sun to come up, and all those mosquitoes that are buzzing around your head, they can't get at your neck. So you don't have to worry about your neck as much. You just sit there and swat in front of your face and you're good to go. It blocks that sun from hitting you in the face. It keeps you nice and cool. Uh, we made them out of uh, moisture wicking materials, uh, a lot like, um, like a Columbia fishing shirt. Uh, so this is going to get rid of all that sweat and keep you nice and dry. Uh, when a breeze comes through, it's going to blow right through this material and cool you off real quick. Um, so, you know, it's really, it's really perfect for hunting in Florida. We also uh, are, are planning to add and will add for, for all the uh, future orders um, a pocket right here on the chest. Um, and the, the reason for that is because, I don't know if you're like me, but I, we sit in a tree stand and we're constantly texting each other when we see things or hear things or, you know, we're talking about whatever's going on. Um, and when you see a deer walk out, you want to get rid of that phone as quickly as possible. And sometimes fumbling around to get in your pocket when you got your tree stand in the way doesn't work out too well. So I have another shirt that had a chest pocket and I love it because I could just be texting or messing around or filling out my uh, my quota applications or whatever and then I see something I just slip it right in that pocket pick up my bow or gun and just go ahead and take my shot anyway if you guys are interested in getting yourselves one of these shirts all you're gonna have to do is send us an email at this email address telling us how many shirts you want what sizes you want and we'll get an invoice back to you with payment instructions you can also go to our Instagram page and there's instructions there on one of the posts and you can send your orders through DMs. Without further ado, enjoy this podcast. Cheers. I got you. You guys didn't get each other. All right. Um, so uh, what's up, YouTube? We're uh, trying something a little different today. Um, we're out here on a quota hunt, um, so uh, this is our buddy Alex. What up? He's been uh, hunting with us quite a bit this season and a little bit last season as well. Um, he's a pretty new hunter. He's been uh, learning. Second season. Second season. Um, he's, he's been learning a lot, and uh, we got a pretty good feeling that he's going to have a chance at, uh, at a deer or a hog or something to get his first harvest uh, this weekend. Oh, yeah. So, um... Not official. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> You never really know, that's why we call it hunting. But uh, so anyway, the point of this uh, video is uh, we're just having uh, some steaks and taters, and uh, we're going to talk a little bit about our strategies and our expectations for this weekend. Uh, we hunted the same spot like two weeks ago, and uh, so yeah, we're going to talk a little bit about what we've learned about it so far and uh, what we're we're focusing on. 
So, um, I guess we can start with Danny. Uh, he came out here. Um, <laughs> I'm doing more eating than talking. <laughs> <laughs> he came out here uh, before any of us because, uh, well, we were just kind of busy, and he he did a bit of scouting and uh, put out some cameras. So he uh, really got the first look at this place. So why don't you tell us uh, when you got here what what you were looking for uh, in particular to uh, to pick some spots to put cameras at. Well, before even getting out here, looked at a huge kind of um, Google and try to figure out where I wanted to focus some time on. So I looked for diversity in the habitats, low areas. I generally like to be as close as possible to a swamp when when you say diversity. When you say diversity of habitats, what exactly do you mean by that? Looking for where cypress swamps meet um, pine trees or where you have um, um, palmetto flats meeting pines. So transition areas. Yep, basically. Trans transition areas. Okay. So, uh, so yeah, we looked at the map, we all marked some points, and then uh, you came out here to set up some cameras. So, what did you find? What did you like? Well, the place is huge. So, I was able to cover about a third of the ground that I wanted to, which is not bad, especially with these e bikes. They really give you a, a huge help. Um, ended up finding a bunch of old rubs. Right, so I ended up sending a, a camera. This was before the, the rut had really started yeah. this season? They were like so. velvet rubs. So they were they older. Were, yeah, well, there were some old rubs, and I found some that were, that were potentially pretty fresh. And they seemed to be like velvet rubs where they just get really rough velvet, nothing really um, aggressive or anything like that. Found some rundown trails and set some cameras on it. All right. So, uh, so then two weeks ago we came out here, and uh, we all hunted. We had another buddy of ours here, uh, Benzilla. Benjamin. Um, yeah. So, so let's talk about what our uh, our progress was. Uh, that weekend and you know what we saw what we learned about this area um when you guys want to start i mean i can i can say a couple things i, I guess i got here a little bit earlier than you guys so i was out mm -hmm. so um so me and ben got here a couple days before because it's a four-day hunt um we uh we got here those first two days and these guys didn't get out until uh, a little bit later so uh first day we came out we went and checked all those cameras that Danny had put out and um, to our surprise the spots that we were expecting to see the most activity uh, really didn't have a whole lot of activity so we were basically at square one uh, starting that weekend now we did have uh, in a really swampy area that that I had picked out on the map um, we did have a little bit of action. We had some does coming through, and uh, a couple nice hogs, and and a lot of turkeys. But because of the position that the camera was set up in, there was a lot of space that the animals could be moving through that area. So I figured if we had some pictures, uh, that there was probably more animals moving through the area than we had pictures. So I went ahead and I set up my stand on a nice tall palm tree. That was sort of uh, between this like uh, this this uh, a real swampy area and and the edge of like a like a palm canopy palm and oak canopy looked really cool. I, I had pretty high hopes for it, and uh, I didn't see anything that morning. So I I got my stand together, and and keep in mind this was really far out. Uh, it was like two miles in, um, more than I really wanted to go. It was through some thick and nasty stuff. So it was, it was further than I really wanted to go. Um, so I decided to check out some new areas, picked out a couple spots on the map, and um, and really kind of bounced around. Didn't find much that I liked until I came across um, two little like openings. They're like palmetto flats with a, 
a little strip of trees in between them and I just had a feeling that there'd be some good trails in there so I went in there there was indeed uh, some good trails um, I didn't really find a lot of tracks but it just looked like a place where I could imagine a lot of does moving through the area um, maybe some young bucks and you could shoot does here so I decided to set up because I could see pretty far it just looked like a comfortable place to set up really and uh, and to my surprise that uh, that afternoon I, I had a doe come through and I shot her and you guys saw that video I think um, well, at least some of you have that was uh, that was the doe that I gut shot and I had to come out the next morning and find it and and really my hunt kind of ended there because I didn't I, I spent so much time trying to find that doe that I really only got to sit one more time but um, the night that I shot that doe these guys showed up so um, yeah you want to tell us about what you saw um, or tell us tell us a little bit about the area that you were set up in first um, you know what what you saw and uh, you know how you reacted to it and how you changed your your strategy a little bit well pretty much when we first got out here I didn't have any time to scout the area as Mark mentioned so Danny got out here prior did some scouting and I kind of just stole his spot <laughs> uh, he kind of he had some cameras up prior or whatnot and he told me look we have some tracks around the area looks like there's a lot of activity when you set up you know around this general area so I picked up I picked a tree decided to sit there and I had all non types of game. action <laughs> See, of, course, of course he goes everything. in and just picks the spot that we're like eh, try this yeah and sees everything you can imagine <laughs> everything I saw well, turkey saw? yeah I saw two bucks and I missed a buck tell which, us about that tell us how that went down all right so I see this buck and he's looking like he's chasing. He's just sniffing the ground, going crazy. Looks like he's on a mission. And I do not have a shot, no matter wait, wait. which way. T take a step back. Tell us about the habitat that you're sitting. Oh, because right. I think that kind of sets the stage yeah, paint, for, paint for the what. Yeah. Yeah, that sets so the stage for what happened. It's thick. There is a lot of brush everywhere. Trees, twigs, like it's thick. Palm trees. Palm trees oaks, everywhere. Young oaks. Yeah, dude. It's crazy. It's noisy. Florida There's maples. <laughs> dead branches everywhere. But lots of sign. Lots and lots of sign. Palmettos. Yeah. Long story short, I see this fucking buck. And uh, I see him through the corner of my eye on the left side. I didn't even think anything would pass by that area, to be completely honest. And as he's coming by, I'm trying to already a picture as to where I can shoot him if he continues to follow the path which he's taken and the only shot I had was right in between two branches which must have been about eight ten inches uh, clearance yeah clearance long story short he comes by stops right in between those two branches I take the shot my heart was racing at 100 miles an hour and my broadhead snap, uh, hits the top twig and deviates the arrow and smashes into the ground. Buck goes running off. Takes off. Not even. He kind of like prances off a little bit, about 15, 20 yards, turns around and just looks, sits there and then he had no walks clue what out. happened. He was not just the like, slightest idea. Damn squirrels. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> not the slightest idea. Well, can you imagine how often bucks probably like hear something squirrel and freak out and then they're like, wait a minute. You know, I've seen oh, them. Yeah. I've had pigeons hanging out around the bucks, and then the pigeons will flare for whatever reason, and then the buck takes off, and then he comes right on back. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, oh, I'm stupid. Yeah, <laughs> but then I realized that where I was set up, I didn't really have a lot of... My shooter lane was terrible. Yeah, you didn't have much for shot opportunities. I didn't, not at all. Um, I ended up having two does come by after that, followed by another buck. And then I decided, hey, it's time to go. I can't, I can't shoot. I don't have a shot anywhere. They're taking a completely different path, and where I'm at, it just isn't gonna work. So and they're I all within like 40, 50 yards. Yeah, and, but that's not even the problem. It's more so there is just trees and twigs and everything in my yeah, way. Yeah, they're on 40, 50 yards, but 
it's thin, thick yeah, stuff. It's very thick. A lot okay. of heavy brush. Um, so I ended up switching up my my spots to a tree that's pretty close to there, but it's right next to the uh, the main trail. Set up there, and I see a bunch of hogs pass by. I see one doe. I see turkey. But again, now at this point, they're too far out. You can't get a shot. So I can't get a shot. Eh, I mean, I guess that's where you live and you learn, right? I mean, that's archery hunting. Right. That's one of the right. difficulties. You tend to see a lot because right. the game is still pretty oblivious, but it's harder to get a shot. Yeah. Now, going back to that buck mm -hmm. that you shot at, do you think there was anything you could have done differently in your setup? Like maybe change the height of your stand? Like if you had set up lower or higher, that would have given you a better opportunity? I couldn't get any higher because I was already right. at the top of the tree. Like is there a lesson that you learned from this that maybe the viewers yes. might be able to use? Clean up your lanes before you set well, up. That's pretty much. Keep in mind that in on, on public land you can't. Right. You can't be cutting down trees or anything Hang like that. Hang on, willy nilly in there. But, <laughs> but what you can do is when you get into your spot and you're going to set up, uh, shine your flashlight up at the tree where you're planning on setting up, and and make sure that you have a clear shot uh, at some of the, the spots along the trail where you think that a deer might pass by. Um, that's I've definitely you know I've made the same mistake before so. That's something that I tend to do now. Yeah, I just, and, um, I, I couldn't take a shot no matter what. If I was any lower, I probably wouldn't have seen the deer. So, so this week you're set up at the second spot, right? Second spot. Where you saw loader. a lot of action. Yeah, man. Now we got muzzle loaders, so if those hogs, deer, whatever, come out, he's, there's no excuse. None. Zero. No excuses. <laughs> so, all right, what about you, Danny? Where are you set up and why? I'm staying in my tent. I'm gonna sleep. <laughs> so Danny, last last weekend, despite being the one that put in probably more work than anybody at this spot, he saw nothing. He saw nothing. Saw some quail. Thank you for the. He spot, saw by some the way. quail. Those are sweet. <laughs> but this is the crazy thing: is he was set up only like a hundred yards away from him. Yeah, pretty much. So like, it's kind of crazy. Yeah, that's you know, the difference. The deer, the deer, like they pick their their trails. Uh, you know, and, and if you're, you know, just a few yards out of their their path, then you're screwed. Well, the first morning, I was set up. <laughs> Did you even see any of the stuff that he saw? That, the first morning, I was set up like 700 yards away from him. Yeah. And I went through the swamp. That seemed like a good idea to go through. <laughs> it was day. <laughs> got in there, got turned around a couple times. Even with the Onyx map and app following a trail it was it's insane out there, man. so then eventually I got to my tree stand and it's almost daytime terrible I was furious because I'm dripping sweat it's not working out I'm like you know what let's see what happens I get up on the tree I saw some quail which is really cool I enjoy seeing quail they're always fun delicious little oh. birds mm -hmm. favorite game bird ever for me and um, around 10 o'clock, Alex is telling me about all this stuff he's seeing. So I'm like, okay, <laughs> maybe I need to move a little closer over there. As I'm heading to Alex, about 10 a.m., he's texting me that he has another doe in the area. So I want to sit back and not go interfere with his possibilities. He had already taken a shot at this buck, so he's freaking out. Once I get down off the street, Sam. Move somewhere else right away. I'm or trying to calm him down. He did. Like, mm -hmm. Relax. Don't uh, don't move. Just sit still. And then eventually, I made my way over there and um, ended up setting up maybe 200 yards away from Alex, um, a little bit further, closer to a river that's in the area or a creek, I guess. And uh, saw nothing. Move Following day. I move my stand 400 yards up a trail. Saw a raccoon. Made my day. That was the end of my hunt. It was a really nice <laughs> raccoon, though. It was like, beautiful. Probably what? Three, four, five year old? 150 pounds. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, the only game that I saw the entire weekend 
was the doe that I shot. And this guy has like a thousand animals walking by him. Can't hit none. Can't shoot at anything. So, uh, that's just the luck of the draw sometimes. Name of the game. So, um, so anyway, uh, where are you set up for tomorrow? Are you in the same, same mm. general area, but general you pick area, something yeah. different, right? Uh -huh. I'm about 150 yards deeper into the swampy area. Um, so, so there's a little clearing pick, in there. What made you pick the spire? you I, I found some rubs, some fresh tracks, and um, a lot of game trails, essentially. So, and I'm like right on the edge of some real thick, nasty stuff where you have an oak tree, a couple oak trees, and it kind of opens up where in the thick area you have trees within every foot or so and this is the part that opens up you'll have palm trees and they're right around every four to five to six feet so you have some open ground so i should have a little bit better visibility and i'm hoping that uh even though there there's are old rubs in there i'm hoping that the deer is still used as a travel area and telling by the tracks on the ground they do um <laughs> Okay, and then uh, my strategy for the weekend is, uh, well, I was planning on getting here a little bit earlier and uh, going out and checking my cameras that I put out two weeks ago. <coughs> but unfortunately, I uh, got here a little too late for that. So um, I'm basically going to go sit the first sit right there where I shot the doe because um, I, I have a camera there and another one a few hundred yards from that. Um, in the afternoon when I get down, I'll... Uh, I'll check the cameras. We're expecting some rain uh, around lunchtime, so we're going to come and hang out here so we're not sitting in our tree stand soaking wet. Um, and then, uh, you know, depending on what I see on that camera, I might uh, might move my stand to another location. Um, I may move a little closer to them. If they're seeing a ton of action, you know, it makes a lot of sense for us to kind of work the same general area. If they're not seeing much, uh, I got a couple spots picked out on the map that uh, that might be worth looking into. So, uh, yeah, I'm really kind of just uh, kind of winging it this weekend and hoping uh, for the best. That worked out pretty well for me last week or two weeks ago. So, um, let's see, what else uh, did I want to talk about? Uh, oh, right, what are, what are our expectations for this weekend? What are we expecting might be different about this weekend versus uh, last weekend? What, what do you expect you might see? At this point, I want to see anything. I expect <laughs> anything that moves. After last weekend, uh, last hunt, not seeing anything. So, every hunt this season, I've seen at least at least two or three deer. Almost every set. Whether they had been at range or um, not shooters, I've seen deer and hogs. This was my first sit that I didn't see a single game animal. Um, so, at this point, kind of hoping I see something, and luckily we can shoot those. I've been after a, a nanny doe. I wanted my big old nanny doe, and I've been after her for about <laughs> at least three years now. I haven't he, got one. He can't shoot does. Uh, before this year, I couldn't shoot bucks, and he'd shoot all the bucks, and this year, I haven't been able to I got my bucks, and I... Well, well, I have. I mean, I have shot in does, but my last doe was over three years ago, and yeah. she wasn't the nanny that I wanted. So when I decided I wanted a nanny doe, that was my last thing. I've never shot another doe since. It's been roughly about three years, so I'm hopefully hoping this might be uh, the year that I can get my nanny doe. I want to put her up on the wall. So, let's see what happens. Okay. What are you guys expecting uh, with muzzleloader season? There's obviously going to be a lot more pressure. Uh, well, what do you think that might do? Luckily, since it's uh, a weekday, I'm expecting not to be getting too much pressure. I'm pretty sure Saturday is going to be a whole, whole different yeah. game. Yeah. Wow. Totally different. Yeah, but, Saturday there's probably going to be people walking everywhere with guns. Yeah. So being that it's Thursday, here. I don't think it's going to be too crazy. I think it's going to be very similar. But those first few shots are going to get the deer moving. <clears throat> yeah, I think um, for this hunt, for the next two days, when there's not a lot of people here, I think uh, kind of hunting like like we're hunting archery season, you know, just setting up on good trails mm -hmm. is the way to go. Uh, but on Saturday, when we expect a lot of people to be pushing deer around, 
it, I think it's going to pay off for us to like switch it up. <laughs> yeah, to like think of maybe areas where people uh, are willing to walk, areas that are open enough for people to sneak around, and then maybe set up our tree stands a little further in, maybe uh, like into some thicker stuff, maybe like over some palmetto flats where people can't really move through it quietly, um, and that that might give the deer some refuge, or at least they'll feel like there's some refuge. They push back into those areas, and then we're waiting back there for them. So we kind of try and use the the all the other hunters to sort of herd the deer towards us. So that's kind of what I'm thinking, at least. So we'll play it by ear. Cross your fingers. Yep. Redemption. Um. <coughs> all right. Well, uh, <coughs> that's really all I got um, to talk about right now. Um, you guys have any? Concluding uh, things to say. I got nada. I'm, yeah. ready. I'm ready to take a nap. Yeah, we uh, we gotta start getting ready. Oh yeah, we're gonna s'mores. We're gonna, we're gonna s'mores, roast some s'mores. Bro. Some lucky s'mores tonight. Yeah, tonight. I mean, maybe we should save that for when we shoot something. Oh no. If if we shoot something. I would think. I mean, I don't know about you. I'm anyway, about um, if you uh, if you like this video, uh, <laughs> let us know in the comments. Uh, like more I said. Bro? It's kind of the first time we've done something like this, so um, if you like this kind of thing, let us know. If any of you guys have questions uh, that, you know, uh, shut up for a second. <laughs> if you guys have any questions uh, about anything hunting related, um, please send them to us either uh, on the Instagram or just drop a comment here. Um, you know, if you if, if we get a positive response about this, uh, this kind of conversational video then you know we can start doing things like this in the future and and answer some questions that any of you guys have but uh for the time being we're uh we're gonna get ready to go to bed and uh get ready to hunt tomorrow morning so uh that's a wrap yep thanks for watching guys and uh we'll catch you next time yeah